This is Bill. And Ada. We're the butlers, sitting on our back porch, thinking about you all. We miss you. We hope you all are doing well. And we hope we see you all in person before long. Take care. And until we do, may God hold you in the palm of his hand. Good morning and welcome to Marvin United Methodist Church. We are Doug and Jane Campbell. This morning the scripture is from 2 Timothy, the first chapter, verses 6 through 12. For this reason I remind you to keep alive the gift that God gave to you when I laid my hands on you. For the spirit that God has given us does not make us timid, Instead, his spirit fills us with the power and love and self-control. Do not be ashamed then of witnessing for our Lord, neither be ashamed of me, his prisoner. Instead, take your part in suffering from the good news as God gives you the strength for it. He saved us and called us to be his own people, not because of what we have done, but because of his own purpose and grace. He gave this grace to us in Christ Jesus before the beginning of time. But now he has revealed to us through the appearance of our Savior Jesus Christ. For Christ has ended the power of death, and through the good news he has revealed immortal life. God has appointed me to proclaim the good news as an apostle and a teacher. And it is for this reason that I suffer these things. But I am still full of confidence that I know whom I have trusted. And I am sure that he is able to keep safe until that day what we have entrusted to me. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks, Thanks be, be to God. God. You know, I hear a lot of people saying that things are very fluid these days. And those of us who look to the news for comfort, we find that one broadcaster says this and another one says that. It's hard to tell if we're being manipulated by political will rather than educated for personal life decisions. Each network seems to say the other is speaking reflections of a real world or fake news. It's hard to know who's telling the truth and what to believe. It's hard to plan for the big decisions of our lives, let alone the little steps of everyday life. But you know, it's the little steps that make all the difference. In faith, we need to step out onto solid ground, the truth that is proclaimed by Jesus and his disciples. Every uncertain moment erodes a little bit of our beliefs and our lives feel it's like none of this is real and that everything is some kind of false reflection. The Apostle Paul lived in a time that was very fluid and where he and other first century Christians were under constant attack and threats of death from without and within the religious influence of his day. As a result, Paul writes to Timothy from jail and Timothy is his young protege who's assigned at the church at Ephesus and he writes to give him encouragement in the midst of all the fake news that's going on. The letter opens with Paul giving thanks to Lois and Eunice. This is Timothy's grandmother and mother because they set the foundation of his faith by their example and reading to him the scriptures that help him to make the decisions for leadership in his personal life and in the church. Paul acknowledges that there will be suffering and that things will seem fluid, but he encourages Timothy to find strength and power not in his own understanding, but in a grace that only comes from a solid foundation of belief in Jesus Christ, who is the revelation of a truth for all time. The good news is that belief in Jesus as the Messiah, promised in the Old Testament, is the truth of a New Testament abundance of life in the midst of struggle, hope in the midst of sorrow, and eternal life in the midst of death. In other words, Christ is the rock of our salvation. So the next time that you begin to feel that things are a little unsettled and fluid, I invite you to find 
a solid foundation. In the creed that was passed down from our Christian forebearers, the creed that you re repeated when you first became baptized in the church and you were asked, what do you believe? And you responded, I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. And on the third day, he rose from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life of everlasting. Amen. And may you find strength in the foundation of your beliefs. And now may the Lord watch between me and thee while we are absent, one from another. <laughs> 